in this episode. Today is a very special moment in time because we have the privilege of getting to know two agents from two different brokerages and having an inter-brokerage conversation about what it means to write a winning offer, as well as what it means to actually cooperate with the agent on the other side. Amazing. These two, yeah, right? Who'd have thunk? Um, so that's fantastic. Okay, I want to bring you guys now into the conversation about cooperation, which is why this is such a special conversation. Um, sometimes I feel that in our industry, we get very sharks versus jets. Okay. It's a little bit West Side Story out there. Okay. Um, and, and the reality is the two of you work so well together for the benefit of the client and getting to the closing table with as light, least amount of stress as possible. I want to talk to you guys about how do you view cooperation in our industry? I'm just going to tell a little tiny story. When I first started in real estate um, and was just doing my first few deals, um, and I would go to my manager, Don, for, for help or to review things with her. And the first thing she would ask me, every single time was not where's the house, what's the price, what do the comps look like, none of that, none of the things that I was focusing on. The first thing, who's on the other side? All right, welcome back everybody. We are here with two fantastic agents here today. And today is a very special moment in time because we have the privilege of getting to know two agents from two different brokerages and having an inter-brokerage conversation about what it means to write a winning offer as well as what it means to actually cooperate with the agent on the other side. Amazing. These two, yeah, right? Who'd have thunk? Uh, these two agents recently met each other through having a transaction together. And in speaking with the listing agent, Marian Greger, who is one of our agents here at Keller, Williams, she said, you got to talk to this gal. She's fantastic. She wrote this offer and it just blew every other offer out of the water. So uh, that's why I picked up a phone and called Laura Detweiler. And here we are today. Um, we do have an upcoming top agent panel. It's an inter-brokerage panel. Anyone is welcome to attend. The conversation is here is how do you write a winning offer with inventory so low, okay, and interest rates so low, people are wanting to move. They want their forever home. They want to find a place they want to quarantine in and they want to capture that low interest rate. But everyone is in intense competition. So how do you write a winning offer? So let's get to it and let's talk to, uh, we'll, we'll introduce Marion first, who was a listing agent. And then Laura, I'd like you to introduce yourself as well and tell us a little bit about yourself. So Marion. Hi everybody. Yeah, Marion Greger uh, with Keller Williams Ann Arbor. I've been a founding member of the Ann Arbor office for a good number of years and uh, just do a lot of deals and meet a lot of great people and have fabulous clients. And it's a great, great business. I absolutely love it. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Marian. And Laura, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What brokerage are you with? How long have you been in real estate and at that brokerage? Uh, anything you want to tell us? Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm Laura Detweiler. I'm with Charles Reinhardt Company in Ann Arbor. I'm in the South office, which is on Eisenhower. Um, I'm a relatively new agent. I've been in the business about six years, although it feels a lot longer. <laughs> um, and I love it. Um, I, I work by myself. I'm not on a team. It's just me. And I always tell my clients, um, when you get me, it's from A to Z, <laughs> for better or worse, um, because I'm a little bit of a control freak and I like to be, you know, intimately involved in every single step of the process. Um, and before that, I was in client management and a lot of those skills um, have certainly translated into uh, being a realtor. Fantastic. Thanks so much for letting us know, Laura. So back in the summer, Marion, you had a listing. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the situation when Laura's offer came to you? Were there multiple offers? Like, what was it about this situation that really struck you? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, it was a fabulous listing. Just a really great, great house tweaked up total. The realtors call it the cream puff. It even had sliding barn doors that the owner had had installed for the closet doors. I mean, everything was tweaked up, contemporary, sharp and at a fabulous price point. So I knew it was going to be totally crazy. Um, and it hit the market and within a, barely a day and a half, we had multiple offers coming in. But what I wanted to say is that we did an open house and during COVID, I had my assistant out there lining people up with social distancing, of course, and everything safe and all that. And knowing I was gonna get a whole lot of offers on this property. But I have to say that Laura did all the right things. I was so impressed with her uh, business acumen and her style and as she mentioned in the intro that she's kind of a control freak well I could see that in her that she wanted everything to go great and she really paid attention to details and I can relate to that completely so um, the way she was handling it was she gave me a simple phone call just a phone call and a lot of realtors don't do this they just write the offer they show property and write the offer and hope it's gonna get accepted but Laura took the time 
to actually call me, the listing agent, and find out about what did the sellers need and want? What were their big, their big racks, so to speak? And uh, because she did that, she got some knowledge on the clients, on my clients, and how to write the best winning offer. Oops. Yeah, and it's such it's a, such a small task, but Laura, I commend you for it because that simple question, what do your clients really care about, is exactly what's gonna give you the advantage. Laura, tell us a little bit about what was going through your mind during that process and you know what it, you knew your clients wanted the house, I assume. So how, what was your thought process when you were writing that offer? Sure. So I always tell my buyers that, you know, they always ask, well, you know, what's, what's the strategy for writing an offer? And I said, well, the process is the, the same or very, very similar um, in every instance, but the strategy differs a lot. And it's completely dependent on that particular property and that seller and that agent. And so I can't give you a blanket answer for that. I said, when it comes time to write an offer, we'll talk about the specifics um, and the context for that. Um, that being said, the process is the same and I always make that phone call. I will start to write an offer, but I will not send an offer until I've talked to the listing agent. Um, and most listing agents want that call because obviously we're all working on behalf of our respective clients um, and the buyer wants their offer accepted and the seller may have, as Miriam said, those big rocks. You know, um, closing date, moving date, those kinds of things can be in some instances very valuable. I mean, the, the sale price is always gonna kind of be, you know, top of mind, but there are other things that may be important to sellers um, and you need to have that insight. And the listing agent, by taking that call, they're doing the best service for their client as well. So that call is benefiting both parties. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Laura. I appreciate it. So I want to get into some of the nuts and bolts because a lot of, you know, if you've got potential clients out there watching this, wondering what makes Marion knock it out of the park with listings, why should they as a buyer work with Laura Detweiler, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about like what makes an offer. Now you've got all these different terms, you've got contingencies, you have things you can write in. Why don't you share with me a few examples, Laura, of what you wrote into that offer specifically that made your offer rise to the top? So I work with a lot of first time buyers. And I start not writing the offer, but preparing the offer long before they, they're at that point. Um, you really have to educate the buyer on what are gonna be the important things when we get to that point. Um, and the market is so tough, especially for first time buyers right now, um, you know, just in the price range that they're generally shopping and um, the good stuff goes so quickly. And so uh, you have to kind of prepare them that it's very likely that you're gonna be in a multi-bid situation um, and or I, I need to prepare them for that. So I start talking about things um, like what to expect during the inspection. I, you know, pair them with a, with a reputable local lender so that they've got their pre-approval letter ready to go. Um, we talk about the appraisal process. We talk about all of these different components. We talk about the home warranty. We talk about, um, you know, how long things take, what to expect so that they understand some of those pieces. And when we sit down to write the offer, um, it's not just, you know, foreign verbiage to them. They sort of understand the different pieces that go into the offer um, and they have a little bit of comfort level with it because you have to assume that they're kind of, that it's intimidating the first time you write an offer. Um, I think and, we forget that as agents, we forget and take for granted that we do this all day, every day. And people buy a house once every seven years, maybe. And the industry changes every seven years anyway. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, their parents are giving them advice. And, you know, the uncle who's an attorney is giving them advice. And, you know, everybody's kind of weighing in and they're going online and researching. But really, when it comes down to it, you're the person that they're going to trust. You're the person that has to hold their hand and get them through that process. Um, and so just remembering that, as you said, Danielle, what's day-to-day -day language for us, what comes super easily for us because we've done it a hundred times, um, it's fine to sort of, you know, back away from that and just start and make it, make it simple, break it down and make it simple. Mm -hmm. So um, I always talk to them about the offer before I actually present the offer paperwork. Because once you see that five page template of, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, legally vetted verbiage, then it's sort of, you know, the wall can go up. So you want to kind of talk about, okay, let's talk about what, um, you know, this is the sale price. This is what the comps look like. Um, it's market driven. You know, the sale price will end up being whatever the market will bear, right? Whatever somebody's willing to pay for the property. Um, I always sort of laugh and say sellers usually think their property is worth a lot more than it is. And buyers always want to get a deal. But the reality is, um, you know, it is a strong market. It is tipping toward a seller's market. And um, so you may have to pay more than list price and you're just gonna have to mm -hmm. kind of get comfortable with that idea. Um, 
And, you know, I can't, there's no right or wrong answer. I always say that. I always say to them, you know, the right answer is, you know, I need to understand what's the highest you'd be willing to escalate, the highest you'd be willing to go, where if you found out it sold for $1,000 more, you'd say, that's okay. Yeah, it's the, the, no, the no regrets offer is a term I've heard for that before. What is your no regrets offer? Yep. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so you're setting expectations by educating them and pre-managing them before it becomes mm -hmm. so uh, large of a decision that now we're in stress mode and now we're emotionally reactive, right? So you're reducing the stress for your clients simply by laying it out for them piece by piece well in advance, um, which I think kudos to you. That's an invisible process a lot of the time, but boy, I'm sure that you have saved your clients a lot of stress. I like that you called it a process because an offer is not an event. It is a process. There are steps that lead up to it. There are steps to get through the offer. There are steps to negotiate the offer to get it signed. So um, you need to let the process happen. Beautiful. Marion, I want to ask you, what are the a few key things that you remember, the nuts and bolts of that offer, that, that I think the words you told me were, geez, it's as if I had written it. Like she just <laughs> read my mind about everything I would have wanted to see in the offer, right? So tell me, what are a few of those pieces? Yes, you remember that so well, Danielle. It was it was as if I had written the offer. So I went, Whoa. I'm not a psychic. I only play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more about that. <laughs> that sounds oh, like okay. there's a story there. <laughs> you too, I tell you. Well, so nuts and bolts. Okay, uh, in a super competitive situation, and when you've got really tight, tight inventory, you want to do whatever you can possibly do to help your clients come out on top. And uh, you know, if I'd had five of those, they'd all be gone that day. But um, so a few of the touch points were that Laura offered a thousand. Well, actually, not a thousand dollars. It was a thousand one hundred dollars. Offered a thousand one hundred dollars above the highest verifiable offer, meaning hey, I have to show her the first page of the purchase agreement, of course, with the with the other uh, buyer's name locked up so that she can see, well, yeah, this is real. This is okay, real. Let's pause there because that is so important. And it's something that a lot of agents don't do. The highest other verifiable offer, right? So that yeah. the seller's sister can't just throw an offer in with no proof of funds and drive the price up, right? So I love that. Right, right. Yeah. And the key was 1,100 above the highest. So, which is really kind of smart, Laura, because a lot of people do a thousand. Well, yeah, well, guess what? What if you have three, three offers and they all say, oh, a thousand more, you know, that, yeah. that doesn't separate anything, the wheat from the chaff. It doesn't separate anybody out. It's very but, price is right. Right. Oh, and going along with that. Now it's great to make this super high offer and that's all wonderful. But what about when you get down to the appraisal? Uh Oh, what if it appraises a little bit short? So, um, she also had in her offer appraisal gap coverage of a certain amount. So that was the amount that her clients, her buyers were comfortable with. And that gave us on the listing side, a great level of comfort and security, knowing that, oh, we've got this cushion, we'll be okay. So um, jumping, oh, sorry, jumping back to the 1,100, there was a limit on how much the, that Laura's buyers would go for, you know, what price point, how high, just to put a lid on it, you know, so it's not crazy, crazy. Um, but then with the appraisal gap coverage, that really kind of tied it. And then to seal the deal, she had no repairs uh, would be asked for under $500, so a $500 price point. So we all know every house has little issues, even a brand new home. And she wasn't going to, she pointed it out that she was not going to nickel and dime the sellers, that uh, it had to be something more significant above $500, $500 on the inspection. Uh, and then continuing on a little bit more, uh, something else that helped her deal win is that just the way she was handling herself and preparing, I could really see all of the hard work up front that she had already done. So that was very apparent. And it was uh, pointed out when it came time for the actual appraisal. And she gave me a courtesy call, just asking in a very nice, polite way, Laura, if I was going to meet the appraiser with comps. Okay, not just a cup of coffee, but with comps. And I said, well, yes, yes, because I always do that. I think that's really important. And she said, well, you know, if it's any hassle, any problem, just let me know. I'm happy to do that, Marion. And that really cemented her to my heart because it's like, girlfriend, you did it right. You did all the things right. And I can't uh, give you enough kudos on that. Yeah, a few things I want to point out there too, right now, I mean, I, I talk to agents all day, every day. So I'm sort of seeing a micro level of data. 
And right now the appraisal gap is so important. And it's not just for the seller, it's for the buyer as well. Because if there's a shortfall and your deal falls apart, they've now lost time and money in a competitive market going into winter when there's even less to pick from. So, um, so, and I'll give you a great example. Um, I, I recently sold my home and thank goodness we had a $5,000 appraisal gap. And the beautiful thing is that now that raises the, the, um, the market value of the homes around me, uh -huh. you know, because we sold for $5,000 above market value. That's how the market appreciates. So fantastic there. I love the fact that you put in the cap for negotiations on inspection, because what it does is it takes a lot of the uncertainty about the process from, out from the buyer and the seller, right? And so many agents, I notice they go and they just kind of like slap an offer together and throw it into your email. And it's like, why would you lead generate for that client, follow up for that client, sign that client, set the expectations for that client, take them out and show them properties all to lose the house just because you put no effort whatsoever into the offer. So um, it's just amazing to me. And, and the reality is every step along that, that road that you as the agent contributed work and hours and time to, that family you're helping or that couple you're helping, they also contributed their time and their emotional attachment and their financial investment, right? Um, so that's fantastic. Okay, I wanna bring you guys now into the conversation about cooperation, which is why this is such a special conversation. Um, sometimes I feel that in our industry, we get very sharks versus jets, okay? It's a little bit West Side Story out there, okay? Um, and, and the reality is the two of you work so well together for the benefit of the client and getting to the closing table with as light, least amount of stress as possible. I wanna talk to you guys about how do you view cooperation in our industry? So I'm gonna start with you, Laura. Sure. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Mary, for the very kind words. <laughs> you were wonderful to work with as well. So thank you. Well earned, my <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, I have a few thoughts about that. Uh, I'm just going to tell a little tiny story. When I first started in real estate um, and was just doing my first few deals, um, and I would go to my manager, Dawn, for, for help or to review things with her. And the first thing she would ask me every single time was not where the house, what's the price, what do the comps look like, none of that, none of the things that I was focusing on. She, the first thing, who's on the other side? That's what she would ask me. And I didn't get it at first. And I sort of struggled to remember, oh, you know, because the names weren't familiar to me. And of course she knew every single realtor in the industry. So I caught on pretty quickly though. I knew she was going to ask me that right away. And, you know, after I had a few transactions under my belt, I started to understand why that was so critical. Mm -hmm. um, it just became obvious, you know, you, the person on the other side can make or break the deal. Um, you know, it, that's true. And, you know, you're, you're hoping that you're going to see your buyers and your sellers again at some point in the future, but you better believe that you're going to run across that agent again at some point. Um, and you want to have a good experience and, you know, you want to feel like you have a good rapport. You want to be the agent that you want to work with. It's kind of, that's like the golden rule of, <laughs> mm -hmm. of being an agent. Um, and, you know, I thought going into real estate that there would probably be more sharks. I don't come across that very often. Um, I find that we're all very collaborative. We all want the same thing, right? Everybody wants a successful transaction. We all want to represent our clients in the best way possible. And ultimately that means a smooth transaction where all parties feel satisfied and happy with the services mm -hmm. that they got. So um, I guess that's just kind of uh, my starting point <laughs> in terms now, of working with other agents. I love that. And I think, uh, you know, there are a few things in particular that came to mind as you were talking. One is that, yes, we want to be fiduciaries for our clients, right? We don't want to give away anything that's in their best interest. We ultimately want to help them reach their goal in the quickest and easiest way possible with the least amount of money or the most amount of money if it's a seller. Um, but your relationship with co-ops in our industry negatively or positively affects your future clients. Do you know what I mean? We are fiduciaries to people we don't even know because we're going to meet them in six months or in a year and we're then their fiduciary. And you better believe that if you were terrible to another agent and caused a big ruckus during a transaction, when there are multiple offers, you think it's going to rise to the top? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that follows you. So it's, it's, it's always really interesting to me when I do come across those one or two that are like <laughs> determined to be aggressive. Uh, but I'm glad, you know, I think it's a sign of your ability to really work well with people that you don't come across that very often right? That you, you probably almost pre-manage those relationships as well, I would imagine. Yeah. And I, I mean, you can still be a tough negotiator. You can, you know, still ask for what you want or what, you know, what, what your clients want. Um, that's fine. But the better rapport you have with that other agent, the better that discussion is going to go. And there just has to be some trust. Um, you know, you, once you have trust with the other agent, you know, when they say, nope, this is my bottom line, 
or this is really what it's going to take to make this happen, then then you believe them. And, you know, you don't have to just keep pushing and pushing or be that shark. You can just, you know, it's honest and it's straightforward and you can have an honest, straightforward discussion with your clients and sort of manage them. Um, I do think client management is important. Um, a good agent will manage their clients, you know, in terms of understanding the process, the expectations, when we can push a little bit more, when we might just have to give a little bit to get a little bit. Um, so, you know, that's, that's part of it. It's your relationship with your own clients, but also with the other agents. Yeah, I think so much of the success of a transaction has to do with the way that you as a realtor deliver the message to your clients about what is going on in the transaction. That can make yeah. or break the entire thing. Marian, I want to hear a little bit from you. How do you view cooperation and what do you do uh, in your business to ensure that that you know, you're putting your best foot forward? Ah, well, um, I believe very strongly in win-win. So I want the deal to have a happy ending. So we're at all at the closing table, eating cookies and drinking coffee, well, pre-COVID. But anyway, um, I want everybody to feel really good about it. So, and whoever my client is, of course, I've got a super strong fiduciary for that client and that's paramount. But there's also the idea of making the other side comfortable and happy that they got what they wanted too. And it's not always about money. And many times there are other factors involved. Um, and so I create a strategy for every single transaction, for every client, whether it's acquisition strategy or selling strategy. Um, and for every conversation, there's a reason for that conversation and strategy and what I hope to achieve when I come to the end of that conversation. Uh, but it's just delightful when I'm working with a, with a great agent. And sometimes, in fact, this summer I had two uh, real newbie agents and they didn't know a lot. And um, I was happy to help educate them a little bit as they were going through the process. So both of those closings turned out super win-win. Everybody was very happy and the clients got what they needed and what they wanted. So, you know, it all comes around. I believe in karma, what you put out there, you're gonna get back. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help other agents and let's, let's make this win-win for everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll quote one of my favorite brokers, Latanya Keith of Keller Williams. Uh, she says, you know, so many times we're, we're so hyper-focused as agents about protecting our clients and getting the best for our clients. And oftentimes we end up messing up what's already going to just go just fine. It's okay, right? We get in and we start doing things. And she goes, gosh, agents would be do so much better if they would just get out of their own way. <laughs> I always thought that was wise, sage advice. Um, okay, I want to ask you guys two questions, totally unrelated. And then I also want you to tell people, how do they get a hold of you if they'd like to go ahead and talk to you about buying or selling real estate? So my first question would be to you, Marion. What are your hopes for 2021? Uh, well, uh, we follow the data really, really closely to see what's happening. Like the Fed's meeting today, looks like rates are going to stay really attractive for quite a while. Um, and I don't expect a uh, repeat of 08 uh, as far as recession. Some people are going to have difficulties because of the COVID not getting the position back. Uh, and so properties will come on the market. So I believe there's going to be an opening up of the inventory, but uh, for purchasers, it's going to be a great, great time. And for sellers, this is an opportunity for them to get a good price for their property. Um, so it's, it's actually going to be okay. So I it's feel good. pretty confident. About it's it. going to be okay. I feel like that's a great message that we end the year on. It's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Marion, how do people get a hold of you? And then Laura, I want to hear about what your hopes for 2021 are. Sure. Um, yeah, my cell 734-649-3733. And email is Marion at Ann Arbor listings. That's listings plural dot com. Uh, feel free to text and I'm happy to take your call. Thanks so much, Marion. Laura, how about you? Your hopes for 2021 and how can folks get a hold of you if they want a rock star realtor? Thank you. Um, gosh, I, I really do think things are going to be okay. Also, um, I think the market's going to continue to be strong. I mean, I know a lot of people are really hurting right now, um, you know, in terms of what health issues may be happening in their families or job loss, things like that. But, um, but the market shows signs of continuing to be strong. It's going to be, you know, a good time to be a buyer and a good time to be a seller. I do hope we get some more inventory. Um, and, you know, we just have to have to remember that, um, you know, People are really rising to the challenge of, of COVID and, um, you know, being at home with their kids and things like that. Um, and in some ways, it's kind of becoming the new normal. And people kind of are going to want to 
get on with their lives. They're going to continue to need to expand their, the size of their home because they're expanding their family, or maybe their kids are going off and, you know, they're grown now and they're downsizing. So those life changes are going to continue to happen um, through, through all of this. And, um, you know, people will, will need to um, remain positive and hopeful and, you know, think about what's best for their family. I'm Laura Detweiler, that's D-E-T-W-Y-L-E-R. Um, you can reach me at ldetweiler at reinhardtrealtors.com. The best way is to just call me, 734-330-9922. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for listening. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Two fantastic agents here locally in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area telling you exactly what it takes to not only have a great listing, get multiple offers, write a winning offer so those buyers get the house, but also how to cooperate with one another. We do have a top agent panel coming up in November. I will display the information here. We will also include a Zoom link down in the comment section so that you can register for that top agent panel as well. That panel is inter-brokerage and cooperative in nature. We want to see as many of you that are there as possible. And it's going to be all about how to get your buyer's offer to rise to the top of that pile so that you uh, can get the house sold and make your clients happy. So thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is Danielle Hayden, team leader for Keller Williams, Ann Arbor, and make it a great day.